Last week, a King County Superior Court judge declared I-1366 the recently approved initiative that would require a two-thirds vote to raise taxes unconstitutional. Are you surprised by the court's action? And secondly, can anything be done? You know, I'm not really surprised by the court's action in this, which is too bad. You know, I would hope that they would have sided with the public on this. This is the sixth time in our state since 1993 that the taxpayers overwhelmingly have supported a two-thirds majority to make it more difficult for us as the legislature to raise taxes. There is, however, there was a House Joint Resolution 4215 just came to the floor yesterday. There was a procedural vote to try and pass that to actually amend the Constitution, making it a provision that we actually have to live by down here. It was a narrow difference. It was 48 to 49, so it lost by one vote. We're going to continue this battle, though, because I think it's important to the taxpayers. Do you expect House Joint Resolution 4215 to pass out of the House Finance Committee? Well, at this stage of the game, I would venture that the chair of the Finance Committee probably needs a little bit of encouragement to bring this bill up for a vote. It is an issue that I know the chair is not supportive of. The Democrats, in the procedural we ran yesterday, voted party line against allowing this to happen, even though most of their districts, by far, actually supported this several times over the last several years. The voters said, we want this. So that person could use a little encouragement right now. There are other bills apparently on hold by the Democratic chairs as well. Can you talk about those? Well, there's three of them. One is related to charter schools. As we know, the state Supreme Court shut down and closed our charter schools just before school started this year. That House bill is 2367, and the chair of that committee has refused to hear that bill, which I think, you know, charter schools is not the fix-all, end-all to help our school system, but I believe it is a very intricate piece of the puzzle in education to help students, especially in those more impoverished areas, inner city schools and whatnot, where we've seen great success with the programs. But to have the system shut down only days before school starts, that's not right. There's 1,300 students that are immediately impacted by this, and we need to encourage that chair of the Education Committee to hear that bill. There's a couple others. I know that anybody has been driving on I-405 lately dealing with tolls. It is a huge problem. It was a problem right out of the chutes. I remember voting against it several years ago when they were looking at doing this system. We had done our homework. We said we do not think this is going to work. It's proven not to work. However, the chair of the Transportation Committee and the House of Representatives at this point is saying, well, it's too early to tell. Well, tell that to the tens of thousands of people that are stuck in traffic that extra hour or so on a daily basis, stuck in this, what I would call a 405 toll debacle. So encouragement to the chair of the Transportation Committee in the House would also be in order. The last one, of course, is something that I think is more of a safety issue to many people, and that's the transgender use of our bathrooms, locker rooms, and whatnot. You know, you have a five-member unelected board of the Human Rights Commission that without really going through a good public hearing process, without having anything open really to the public, they're, they're, they're appointed people, they're not elected people, they changed, made a massive change, not only in our schools, but in our private, you know, private sector and public sector locations where it's, I, I believe the issue is not, it shouldn't be us versus them, but you, you've created an atmosphere where, you know, whether it's a man going into a woman's room or a women's locker room or a woman going into a man's restroom or locker room, there's a safety aspect of this. And I think about, you know, I have a daughter that's a college age girl and, you know, I can only imagine what my response would be if I watched my daughter go into a restroom only to be followed by some six foot bearded guy that, you know, thinks that he wants to use that restroom. Now, he may be transgender. I don't know that. Are we creating a safety problem here? And I believe this issue is something that needs to be brought to the legislature. I think it's something that the legislature and the governor need to be held accountable for and the decisions that we make. And I, you know, truly for the safety of our citizens, while I understand that there are some, some challenges that the transgender community has been dealing with on this, I think that what this solution by them does is it makes it 10 times worse. Is there any way of breaking the logjam and convincing these Democratic chairs to move the bills? We have a saying in Olympia that silence is agreement. And so my ask of you is don't be silent. You know, if any of these issues are heartfelt, you know, important issues to you, you need to be contacting legislators down here in Olympia to encourage them to hear these bills. You know, we as your elected officials were sent down here by the public. You have a lot of people that are, that are making a lot of these decisions who are not elected. But in these situations, you've got elected officials that have the opportunity to hear these bills, have the public process take its course, and then ultimately vote on these things. Let the public have its day in court, and these, these chairs of these committees are not allowing for that. I would encourage you to go to our legislative website, which is on your screen. If you go to the left-hand side of that screen, once you get on the website, there's a section that says legislative committees. 
plug in there the Education Committee, the Finance Committee, the Transportation Committee, or the Judiciary Committee, any or all of those. It'll give you the members of the committee and it'll give you all their contact information. And I would sure encourage folks to not be silent on these issues. They're very important. Are there other ways people can become involved? Absolutely. By phone, you can call the legislative hotline at 1-800-562-6000, which is on your screen, or go to our legislative website on the screen. But you know, for us to do our jobs effectively, we need to hear from you. We need to know what the challenges are that are going on back home. And again, as I said earlier, you know, don't be silent. You know, if you don't agree with what we're doing, or if you want to encourage us along the way, give us a call, give us your input. For us to do our job, we need to know what's going on back home. Thank you very much.